Hey Connecting Church, thanks for tuning in this Palm Sunday evening as we reflect on Jesus' journey toward the cross. I know this season is weird, it's not normal for us as we celebrate Easter. Because of the coronavirus, a lot of our routines and normal Easter practices and celebrations are disrupted. But to help make this a special time for reflecting on Jesus, every day we're going to be posting videos and sending out emails that will help us reflect on what Jesus experienced, what happened in the lives of the disciples that day as Jesus journeys toward the cross. And so every day, tune back and, and follow in as we just debrief on what Jesus was experiencing and teaching as things led up to ultimately His sacrifice on the cross and then, of course, Easter morning. And today being Palm Sunday, we want to focus in on Jesus' entry into Jerusalem and how He declared Himself to be the King and the Messiah. So if you have a Bible, you can turn to Matthew chapter 21, Matthew chapter 21, where we're going to focus in on this part of the Easter story and Jesus' journey toward the cross. Now, something to keep in mind before I read these passages is that during this season, it's Passover season, which is a special Jewish holiday. And during this holiday, many Jews and even Gentiles from all around the world would travel toward Jerusalem. And there in Jerusalem, they would celebrate Passover. And so while Jerusalem had maybe 80,000 to 100,000 normal residents, somewhere between 200,000 and a million visitors would come to the city for Passover. So think about it, 10 times the normal city population could be here, and all of them are coming with a sense of seeking God, of wanting to know Him and pray to Him, hungry for God to move, and with what's known as a messianic expectation, that they were praying for God's promised Messiah, they were longing for the promised Messiah who would set the Israelites free, from the Roman tyranny and would be their king. And so, with all those people there hungry for the Messiah, that's the political climate and religious climate that Jesus walks into and clearly declares himself to be that Messiah. Now look here at Matthew chapter 21, verse 1. When they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphagia at the Mount of Olives, Jesus then sent two disciples telling them, Go into the village ahead of you. And at once you will find a donkey tied there with her foal. Untie them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. This took place so that what was spoken through the prophet might be fulfilled. Tell daughter Zion, see your king is coming to you, gentle and mounted on a donkey, and a colt, the fall of a donkey. Now when you hear those words, Jesus, of course, was staying in a suburb, Bethany, right outside of Jerusalem. And so every day he would travel into Jerusalem from the suburbs. And this first trip into Jerusalem it was going to be something special. He was going to ride in on a donkey. Now to make this very clear, by riding on a donkey, this just wasn't a means of transportation. This just wasn't because Jesus was tired of walking. To ride on a donkey was clearly to declare so that no one would miss it. Jesus is saying, I am the King. And in fact, in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, it says that the Messiah would enter Jerusalem riding on a donkey, modeling how Solomon, King Solomon, back in the older days of the Israel history, rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. And so to ride on a donkey was to declare so boldly and so clearly that no one in the city would have missed it, from Romans all the way down to the Jewish followers of God. They knew that Jesus was saying, I am King and I am Messiah. Now, as the story continues, you see that. Verse 6, The disciples went, and just as Jesus directed them, they brought the donkey and its foal. Then they laid their clothes on him, and he sat on him. And a very large, large crowd spread their clothes on the road. Others were cutting branches from the trees and spreading them on the road. And then the crowds went ahead of him, and those who followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in uproar, saying, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. So you can clearly see, as Jesus rode in on the donkey, he was declaring himself to be king. And in fact, you see this because they started laying their coats and their clothes, kind of making a royal red carpet for him. They started cutting branches off and laying it down. And the whole city was in uproar because they're going, who is this guy? Who is so bold enough to declare himself 
the king. And in fact, as Jesus rode in on that donkey, he declared war on the religious establishment. In fact, there was no going back. You see, Jesus could have lived a a simple life. He could have continued a, a faithful ministry. He could have preached and shared and done miracles up to this point. But when he rode in on that donkey, he declared himself to be king. He set himself against Caesar, and people were openly openly declaring him to be king. There was no turning back. Either he would become their physical king, or he would die. There was no more middle ground. Jesus declared himself to be king. The stage was set for what would happen that week. The stage was set for the cross. And so there's a few things we can apply to our lives as we think about the Palm Sunday story for our own hearts. And the first one is clear. Jesus has to be our king. When Jesus rides on the donkey and he shows people that he's Messiah, he's the king, that message is for us today too. Because Jesus has to be our king. Jesus has to be on the throne. And just just like Jesus goes to confront the religious establishment, Jesus is confronting our hearts today. Because we have idol worship in our heart. We want to worship our own way. We want to worship our own things. We want to worship ourselves or make thousands of other idols throughout our lives. From our work, to our family, to our money, to our cars, to our sports following. We can make all sorts of idols. And as Jesus comes in on that donkey and says, I am king, he is coming declaring war on the religious establishments. And that includes the things that we prop up as our idols of worship. And so we have to lay down those things for Jesus. We have to lay down our clothes, lay down our palm branches, lay down our lives for Jesus who is the King. There is no neutral ground with King, with the King. You either follow or you don't. You either submit or you're in rebellion. And so we must come to our King fully laying down our lives and turning to the King. The other thing I think that's amazing is that this is really a dress rehearsal for something that is yet to happen. Jesus marching into Jerusalem to declare himself the king is true, but ultimately he would die that sacrifice on the cross, would be buried, raised again on the third day, and then go into heaven. But we know that someday Jesus is coming back. We know that someday he will return, he will come, and he will not be leaving, but he will establish a new Jerusalem and a new world and a new heavens and a new earth. And because of that, this march into Jerusalem was a dress rehearsal for an even greater march where our King Jesus will finally come back, He will return, He will fix the brokenness of our world, and we will live and we will worship Him. I pray that you can live that today in your life. I pray that you know Him in your life and that you are laying down your lives before this King. 